Welcome back to the Series 3 build. Today we're fitting the tailgate. Now, after a lot of searching and scouring the internet, a friend of mine sent me a link to a matching tailgate. Look at that. Same color as the Series 3 and in ridiculously good condition. But this is also not a brand new tailgate that's been painted. It's around 45 years old. So almost as old as Yui himself here, which is a real bonus. I think the galvanizing is weathered and old and it's got some of the bits on it. I'm happy, I'm stoked with that. It's not a perfect match in terms of color, but I can live with that. It's like the tiniest, tiniest difference. And I think it's because this has been sitting in a barn for the last 40 years. But before I get carried away trying to fit it on, I think I need to get rid of the door locks. There's a hinge down here. There's a bunch of stuff that needs to happen, right? And obviously, like the rest of this build, I've never done this before. So we're gonna both be learning in real time. All right, let's get these bits off. The previous owner converted this Series 3 into a pickup with a cab. With that, he removed the rear door and the side panels, but I guess he never got round to fitting the tailgate. He did supply a tailgate with it, but it was green and needed a few repairs. So I sold it for 50 bucks to help fund the purchase of this new slash old one that matches. So all these bits will probably be kept together and go with the new owner in case they want to put a full rear door on. And then it's got the catch, all the shims. So it's kind of like a little kit for the new owner if he wants to change anything. Don't throw any little bolts away from the Land Rover. Kept safe. With all that other stuff out the way, I could offer up the tailgate to see how it fits but it didn't want to close. The boot retaining strip was preventing it from closing fully and even pushing harder didn't work. So it was a simple matter of removing the retaining strip, breaking the first screw by using an impact driver and then going back to 1973 and using hand tools. Once I got the retaining strip off, I found Another one? Yep, another retaining strip under the retaining strip. So I had to remove that one too. Now I could clear out the remaining stuff in the tub so I could see what was lurking beneath that rubber mat. I don't know what this tub floor looks like underneath these rubber mats, but I kind of, I can't not know. You know? And just as the old saying goes, curiosity made the Land Rover owner sad and poor. But not this time, because this tub is in incredible condition. Granted, there are some leaves and gook and stuff, but it'll scrub up really nicely. Before I wash it out, I actually want to take these rear benches out. They're a bit rattly and gross and they're tatty, so I think now is the opportunity to take them out and see what I can do with them. And now here's your chance to get involved with this build. I'm really curious to know what people think. Should I recover and reinstall the seats or leave them out completely? Let me know in the comments below. Now that we've got a clean, clean tub, we can try and refit the tailgate, mark out where the anti-loose drop-in things go and drill those out and fit them. Without the retaining strip, the tailgate closed beautifully. And after checking the gaps were even, I marked where the anti-loose pins would be fitted. 
In retrospect, I should have checked the height of the tailgate as well before marking for the holes, as the height is adjustable. I was very lucky to get away with it, to be honest. The other side was exactly the same, but marginally less accurate on my part. But now the tailgate can close and lock in place, and I think it finishes off the rear end perfectly. Yeah, that looks sick. Okay. All right, we're almost there. I've got to put in some chains. I'm gonna stay with these squiggly pigtails. You can see these. And I'm going to use galvanized chain, which I think is what was originally used. Again, LR parts to the rescue. They're not sponsoring me at all. Um, I just keep using them because I've just found a lot of series stuff on their website. But I've bought two chains and then it needs an anchor point which is this guy here now these were 22 pounds each I could have gone with the sort of a flat plate that was like four quid but that's not correct for this type of vehicle so I wanted to keep the traditional galvanized pressed metal and yeah 44 pounds for both of them gosh and that goes on the inside here somewhere and thus began a game of car part Jenga, to prop up the tailgate at the correct height and angle to allow me to fit the chains in the right place. Ultimately it was all in vain, as the chains are a set length anyway, so I ended up trusting the brilliant creative minds of the Land Rover engineers. I think these might be pre-stamped holes here and here as to where this goes. There's a reinforced plate on the inside of, of this our wheel arch, which I guess is there to take the weight of the tailgate and, you know, make it strong. I know some people have put these on an angle to keep the angle of the chain. Might be clever actually, because science. And after fixing the chain to the anchor point with a small pin and an R clip, I chose to ignore geometry and went with the easy option. All right, Land Rover, I'm going to trust you that these holes are in the right place. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Slap bang in the right place on that reinforced panel. Right, that's great news. But at least now the tailgate could open and close as it should. And I had something to help stop the chains getting in the way, which you'll see in a bit. Something else I noticed was that when the tailgate was open, the chains were at different tensions. And if you're anything like me, I'd rather burn the car and throw it away than live with that. So a little trick I found was to twist the chain a couple of times, which actually adjusted its length. All right, now these chains are gonna rattle their brains out. And also when you try and close the door, it, they're, gonna, they're getting all jammed up. So I got these sleeves to go over the chains, which I'm hoping will make a big difference. But I ordered double what I needed. So if you're watching this video and you need some, please make sure to subscribe and send me a message and I'll post them out to you courtesy of, well, me and uh, Brickpot. But if you need these chain covers, send me a message. Installing the chain covers is dead straightforward, but to give you an idea of what it's like, try to imagine playing snooker or pool using a rope as a cue. So all I got left to do with the tailgate is put this cotter pin in to stop the tailgate from sliding off the hinges. Let's see if I can 
Diamonds. Lastly, a little Lanoguard to keep things smooth. Lanoguard is a brilliant rust prevention treatment, and if you want to watch a video made about it, it's linked in the top right corner. Well, I think that looks fantastic. The more I look at it, the more the color matches perfectly. The weathering on the galvanizing matches. I think it, it really ties it up nicely. And with these chain protectors on here, there's no rattle. And when you fold the tailgate up, they, they sort of curl out the way. So it's, it's brilliant. There's one more thing before I sign off on this video is to address this tub. You can leave it bare, but I have some industrial rubber slash plastic workshop floor tiles, which I think will go perfectly in here. These industrial shop floor tiles are the same ones I have here in the workshop. I think they'll make the perfect load bed surface for the series. They're not super heavy, they're very hard wearing and they look good. Plus there's the added bonus of them being free. I wanted a full tile near the tailgate end of the tub because I think it looks better with the small tiles further away from you up against the cab. Continued until the temperature dropped to minus three and then packed up for the night. The next morning I had a few adjustments to make so the floor would sit flush and flat in the tub. I cut it just a little too big so I could sand and trim it until it fit perfectly. I also had to cut out a hole for the old rear door hinge. Then it was a case of locking the tiles together and giving them a scrub and a wipe down. So one of the last, last, last things is to tidy up this retaining plate and reinstall it. So I scraped it clean and gave it a light sanding before tentatively refitting it, knowing that the tailgate didn't close the last time it was installed. And just as before, it still didn't fit. Right, so it's a very crude and simple plan. I need to bend the edge down a little bit so that the tailgate closes nicely. And I don't have a bending table. So I'm going to screw this retaining plate to a piece of 2x3 and I'm going to slowly finesse it with a hammer. Okay, let's pause there. It didn't work. So I took it over to the bench vise and that seemed to do the trick. Well, I'm definitely not a metal smith, but let's go and try it out. Right, let's have a look. I did a thing that works. Well, there you have it. The tailgate is on. Another piece of the puzzle completed. I'm absolutely chuffed to bits. I think it looks amazing. I think it really rounds off and finishes off this vehicle. I think once the wheels are added, oh, it's gonna be a thing to behold. I'm undecided what to do there yet, but that's the next video is to sort out the wheels. So thanks again for watching. If you've made it this far in the video, please do consider subscribing. There'll be much more content coming. Huey has a, a few more things need doing before he's up for sale and ready to go. So watch out for those videos coming soon. But thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next one.